Hey guys, Stanik Sos here. So today we'll be talking about the technological advancements in the One Piece world. Now, I know when a lot of people think about technology, they just think about gadgets and electronic stuff. But when I say technology here, I'm speaking more broadly about the application of scientific knowledge for practical purposes across a variety of industries. So we'll be looking at many different aspects of the One Piece world and seeing just how advanced they are compared to us. Now let us start off with the weaponry. Given that the One Piece world has a pirate era setting, many guns in this verse are generally modeled off of older guns. Guns. And a lot of people think that because they are modeled off of old guns, that this means they have the same limitations as these old guns. Now this is just false. In SBS Volume 9, Oda confirms that even though these guns look similar to the flintlock pistols which we know in real life, the ones in the One Piece world are modified and improved versions. One such modification that he specifically mentioned is that the One Piece flintlocks can shoot any number of times in comparison to real world flintlocks which can only be fired once. Another modification which he did not mention but we can clearly see in the manga is that these guns are capable of producing way more destructive power than their real world counterpart. We see this for example when a bullet literally exploded on contact with Hordy. We further see the extensiveness of these modifications in the fact that Igora modified a saxophone to fire multiple bullets. Zoro even confirmed to us that this saxophone is specifically modified to be a shotgun. Igora also added rifle barrels to the curls of his hair that fire when he pulls on his necktie. And these clearly aren't normal guns. Even when a gun looks absolutely silly, like the yellow gun used by Mr. Seven and the Gero Gero gun used by Miss Father's Day, which are literally made to look like toys, even in this case, these guns are modified to fire die-shaped and frog-shaped bullets respectively, which literally explode on impact. And Von Argo, using his amazing eyesight, and what some would want to disparage as a old looking gun, he was able to shoot three seagulls that were flying above the going merry with what seems to be a single bullet which was fired from an island that those on the going merry could not even see. And note, if you are on the sea and can't see land, that generally means that you are at least three miles away from land. And this is given our planet's curvature. Thus on the One Piece planet which is likely bigger than our planet, this at least value is likely larger. Now it is very unlikely that Von Argo was coating his bullets with Haki to kill three random birds. So this means that his supposedly old looking gun must have been able to support firing bullets with very little or no bullet drop to distances of at least 3 miles. To put this into perspective, the longest confirmed modern sniper rifle kill is 3540 meters which is the same as saying 2.2 miles. So we know that some sniper guns in the One Piece world, without coating the bullets in Haki, can match and outdo even modern sniper rifles as it relates to the maintenance of the accuracy of bullets traveling at far ranges. Now I could go on forever here, but the point is, we know that even the most basic guns in the One Piece world, though they may look like some old real world guns, they are modified and improved versions that do not share their real world counterpart limitations. They can fire more bullets, fire faster, fire stronger, and maintain accuracy better than those old guns. The same is true of cannons in the One Piece world. A single buggy bomb fired from a regular cannon was able to destroy multiple buildings and leave a town half destroyed. Buggy even has a pellet sized version of his buggy bomb which he calls a special muggy ball. And you can see where this pellet sized explosive results in an absolutely massive explosion. Even a couple of shots fired from a marine warship was able to make an explosion about one third the size of the gates of justice. And for perspective, the gates of justice literally makes a normal warship which is about the size of the thousand sunny thus about 50 meters. The gates of justice makes this look like a toy ship. We even see modified bazookas in the One Piece world. Caesar's KX launcher is a weapon designed to launch needle tip missiles carrying a ultra lethal poison and wipers burn bazooka 
is a Skypian weapon that can launch both conventional cannonballs as well as a huge column of white blue flames when equipped with a breath dial. And in terms of diversity of weapons available in the One Piece world, we see where dynamites are used by Pedro, grenades are used by Kid Law, landmines are used by Spandam, Frankie created a tank, torpedoes were used by a random group in a submarine, and missiles are routinely used by Frankie. So there are quite a bit of options. Even something as simple as a normal bow and arrow is used in the One Piece world because when fired with Haki, a normal arrow can be more destructive than a modern gun, as demonstrated at Kuja Island. So judging the diversity or the potency of the weapons in the One Piece world simply by how they look or by the fact that this is a pirate era setting is just not applicable here. There is a wide range of weapons available in the One Piece world and some of these weapons are even stronger than the modern weapons that you would compare them to. Now let us move on to transportation. So in the One Piece world, there are no modern cars or airplanes, but there is a variety of modalities of transportation in keeping with the setting. So the most obvious means of transportation given that it is a pirate setting are the various ships used in the One Piece world. Like with guns, these ships are generally based on classical ship designs. For example, the Going Merry is based on a caravel. Don Craig's ship, the Dreadnought Sabre, is based on a galleon. And the Thousand Sunny is based on a Briggs sloop. But like we already established with the weapons, just because the looks of these ships are based on that of older ships, that does not mean that they share the same limitations. Let us take the Thousand Sunny for example. First and foremost, it is made of Adam wood. This is a special type of wood that is capable of withstanding cannonballs and gunfire quite easily. It is also equipped with two specialized air cannons, Kuda Burst from the back and the Gone Cannon in the front. And these cannons are powered by barrels of cola. Then you have other ships like Hancock ship, the Perfume Yuda, which is carried by two giant snakes in the front and has a paddle mechanism at the back. Whitey Bay ship, which is reinforced with steel, is literally shown to be plowing through the walls at Marineford. And Big Mom's ship, the Queen Mama Shanter, is literally alive. Now most ships in the One Piece world are generally not as extreme as these ships. But the point is, Many of these ships in the One Piece world are made from special materials or have modifications and we also know this must be the case because the One Piece seas aren't exactly normal. You have the reverse mountain where the sea currents are literally under so much pressure that they actually flow up this mountain. And this isn't a small mountain. There is also the knock-up stream which is a sea current so powerful that it goes up into the literal sky. You also have snake-like currents that bend and seem as if they are attacking your ship called serpent currents. And you even have sea slopes, which are slanted areas of sea. And of course, don't forget the giant monsters that they regularly encounter. But then you'll have a person like Mihawk, who uses his Hitsugibune, a small sailboat, to traverse these treacherous seas. You clearly can't compare these ships to normal ships simply because they look alike. And then there are also other means of transportation such as a submarine. And as I had shown before, a random pirate group was operating in a submarine. And we know that large ship, the Polar Tank, is also a submarine. And the Straw Hats have their own personal submarine. However, we generally don't see submarines that much. And this is more than likely because any ship can more or less be converted to a submarine by coating it as Sabo de Archipelago. There are also various motorcycles in the One Piece world. Smoker has his three-wheel billower bike, which seems to have a modification that allows him to power it using the smoke produced by his devil fruit. And Oda has also confirmed that this bike is amphibious, and thus it can traverse both land and water. And Frankie has his Kurosai FRUIV, which is also a three-wheeler motorcycle that is made of wapo metal, and it's likely either fully electronic or powered by cola. There are also even regular bicycles, such as the one that Aokiji uses with his devil fruit power to literally ride across the sea. Then there are transportation methods that are specific to certain islands. So in Skypiea, there is a water scooter type of vehicle known as a waver. And a waver basically allows you to ride on sea clouds. 
and it is powered by either a breath dial or a jet dial. There's also a jet board variation of the Wavo, which is basically just a floating skateboard. And of course, there are also shooters, which are basically just breath dial powered ice skates that allows the wearer to travel on sea clouds. Inal even created a flying ship known as the Ark Maxim. And in Weatheria, they had multiple balloon airships. In contrast, at Fishman Island, there is literally a fish bus stop and a fish bus used to get around the island. There's also the fish taxi and the long flounder, which both basically do the same thing. There's even a turtle elevator, which as the name suggests, acts as an elevator. Compare this to the bundler, which is an elevator mechanism above ground used to scale the red line. And Water 7 succeeded in producing multiple sea trains, that is, trains which travel on the sea. So there's quite a bit of travel technology in the One Piece world, and a lot of it obviously has to be appropriate for where in this world you are. Now let us move on to communication. The One Piece world does not have modern day cell phones, but it does have its setting appropriate equivalent known as Denden Mushi. Denden Mushi are a species of snails that can telepathically communicate with each other over vast distances using what seems to be electronic waves. They can also perfectly mimic human speech, even imitating people's voices. Thus, in the One Piece world, people have taken advantage of these abilities by attaching dials, receivers, and other accessories that in effect convert these creatures to phones. And like your normal phone, the appearance of these creatures can even be customized. We see where for example that Lars Denden Mushi has his hat and symbol and Big Mom's Denden Mushi looks like her. Now we know for a fact that Denden Mushi signals can cross vast distances because we see where Professor Clover at O'Hara in the West Blue was able to communicate with the seven elders who are located on top of the red line. And Bartholomew who is sailing the new world also has a Denden Denden Mushi on his ship, which is used by his crewmate Gamba to regularly call his grandmother, who is all the way back in the East Blue. And just as with modern devices, these signals can be wiretapped and listened to using the Black Denden Mushi variant. You can even prevent people from eavesdropping on your calls by attaching a white Denden Mushi to your normal Denden Mushi because the white Denden Mushi produces signals that neutralizes the black Denden Mushi's eavesdropping abilities. Similarly, the horned Denden Mushi can be used to jam radio transmissions from other nearby Denden Mushi. But Denden Mushi aren't used only for audio based communication. There are also visual variants of Denden Mushi. So the video Denden Mushi she generally has two parts, a small recording snail known as a Kameko and a larger projecting snail known as the Proko. The Kameko records the events and transmit it to the Proko which then projects it. We see this for example when video, inclusive of sound, of the entire Marine Ford War was transmitted in real time to islands all over the One Piece world, including Sabo de Archipelago where it was projected onto large screens, which also had large speakers beside them. These visual Denden Mushi can also serve as surveillance cameras and alarms as we saw in Impel Down. They can also be used as a camera to take pictures as we've seen done by Koala and a single Denden Mushi can be used as a projector of literally anything by the Denden Mushi using one eye to look at the thing and the other eye to project it. So again, we see here that it is not the case that the One Piece world is missing modern amenities like cameras or projectors or cell phones. No, it is just that it has its own setting appropriate equivalent. The Denden Mushi. Now let us go to one of the frontiers of science, that is genetic engineering. So in our world there are many factors which limit the scope of genetic engineering. These include things such as the limit of our understanding of human biology, the limit of our current technology, as well as ethical considerations that must be contended with. However, in the One Piece world a lot of this just is not a problem. So on the lower end of genetic engineering in the One Piece world, we see where Caesar Clown has achieved varying degrees of gigantification of normal individuals. He was not able to fully gigantify anyone, but we can clearly see where normal children were made to be way bigger than even adults. However, this did come at a heavy cost because these partially gigantified children had at most five years to live, and Caesar did have to use unethical measures to achieve this. Then on the 
the upper end of genetic engineering in the One Piece world, we see where they have successfully created genetically enhanced humans called modified or augmented humans. To do this, they literally needed to understand a thing which they call the lineage factor or bloodline elements, which basically describes the blueprint of life. The obvious equivalent which we have is DNA, and a DNA helix is literally drawn in the panel. However, we do not know if this lineage factor described operates the same or similar to the DNA that we know. But Vince Moat Judge modified his own children from inside their mother's womb before they were born, and this made them far superior to any ordinary human. For example, they have superhuman strength, so even as a child, Reju could bend metal bars. They also have superhuman speed and endurance, so again, even as children they could easily clear a military grade obstacle course and swim far distances in the ocean. They also have a hardened exoskeleton such that their bodies are described as being made of metal and a special bullet that is designed to completely pierce a shield bearing soldier in heavy armor is what is required to pierce their body. And this genetic enhancement also gave them special devil fruit like abilities. So for example, Niji's ability allows him to generate electricity from his body similar to Inel and the Mink tribe. And in the One Piece world, they are not only able to modify humans at a genetic level, they can outrightly even create them. We see this again in the Germa Kingdom, where the majority of their soldiers are produced via cloning by duplication of a subject's lineage factor. These clones are grown in large tanks resembling bottles and grow at roughly four times the rate of a normal person, thus gaining the body of a 20 year old in only five years. The clone's body will be completely identical to that of the original, but the clone will have a soul of their own as well as volition and responsibility over their actions. We see this where they were excited to watch Sanji and Judge fight and were happy about Sanji's wedding. However, during the creation process you seem to be able to instill certain values into them. For example, the clones are extremely loyal to Germa and do not fear death at all. Now probably the peak of genetic engineering in the One Piece world is the production of artificial devil fruits. Through Vegapunk's discovery of the lineage factor, Caesar was able to recreate the effect of Zoan fruits, functionally creating chimeras which are part human and part animal. Vegapunk supposedly failed the artificial devil fruit which Mononosuke ate is even better than Caesar's because in comparison to the small fruits which permanently changes a person's form to a human-animal hybrid, Vegapunk's devil fruit behaved more like a traditional devil fruit in that Mononosuke can choose to be in his full human form or his full dragon form. It is likely that with training, he'll also be able to go hybrid. So now let us move on to robotics. So just as how the One Piece world offer the capability to modify and enhance an individual before or after birth at the genetic level, this world is also technologically advanced enough to modify and enhance an individual with artificial machine parts to form what we would call a cyborg. Now this modification can be something relatively simple such as replacing a single lost body part such as an arm. You can replace this arm with a mechanical prosthetic that kinda looks like a normal arm such as we see with Z and a hero. Or you can outright just replace the arm with a weapon such as seen with Gotti who replaced his arm with a huge multi-barreled gun. This modification can also be something as complex and extensive such as replacing almost the entirety of a human's normal body with machine parts. Frankie was the first person we met like this. When we first met Frankie pre-timeskip, some of his modifications included his entire front half was metallic and resistant to bullets. He could detach and extend his hand which is made of metal to punch someone far away. His hand could also be converted to a cannon or fire bullets. He could also breathe fire. He could even split the lower half of his body to a centaur configuration and his stomach contained a refrigerator compartment that could hold up to three bottles of cola that served as fuel for him and his attacks. Post timeskip we see where Frankie enhanced himself even further to become taller and more bulky. His eyes and most of his head seem to now be mostly machine. He's able to shoot a laser beam from his hands and he added lights to his nipples. 
so the range of enhancements possible is clearly diverse. The next cyborg we met was Kuma, who Vegapunk progressively converted from a human to a machine with no emotions or memories whatsoever. And this completed Kuma machine model was then mass produced as a cyborg army for the marines known as the pacifistas. And these pacifistas are even equipped with laser beams directly based on Kizaru's light devil fruit. We also see where Queen's body has been modified such that even when he uses his devil fruit to turn into a dinosaur, he can still use these cybernetic modifications. These modifications include having a Gatling gun in his throat and being able to extend his body parts such as his neck. Even normal animals within the One Piece world have been shown to be modified. On Karakuri Island, which is Vegapunk's home island, we met Torimo, which is a modified dog. And we know that many other animals on this island are also modified. There are also external means of enhancements similar to Iron Man. These include the raid suits. The raid suits are waterproof, so the wearer can be submerged without problems. They are also resistant to fire, though an extremely powerful fire attack like we saw with Big Mom does result in some damage. The boots of the suit have a flotation device that allows the user to fly and it also has an acceleration device that has been shown to allow Ichiji and Niji to move at light speed. The capes of the suit are shown to be fine after withstanding a storm of bullets fired from the walker pistols which remember we said was specifically designed to completely pierce a shield bearing soldier in heavy armor. And of course, each suit provides a unique ability. So for example, Sanji's suit allows him to turn invisible. There is also the more bulky Hulkbuster type of armor, which Frankie created, known as the Battle Frankie 38, also known as the Iron Pirate General Frankie. So of course it has the standard stuff like being able to shoot bullets from its arm, but the main thing about it seems to be its strength and durability. Like it is able to deliver extremely powerful punches, enough to easily blow away multiple fishmen, a species noted to have 10 times the strength of a regular human, and without much effort it was able to tank multiple explosive attacks from Baby 5 without any significant harm. And off note, it is also able to fire a giant blast of compressed air known as the General Cannon. This General Cannon was powerful enough to deal heavy damage to Baby 5 and Buffalo as well as destroy most of an ice mountain behind them. So they are pretty advanced in robotics. But now let us speak briefly about climate technology. So on Weatheria, the artificial moving sky island where scientists gather to study the climate of the One Piece world, we were introduced to various scientific advances in the study of weather. We saw where they had a highly advanced control room which seemed to comprise of modern technology. We also see where they have their own unique umbrellas made of a bubble-like technology. We were also introduced to One Piece specific technology such as the wind knot. Now this is a rope with wind creating properties that is tied three times. Untying one knot results in a light breeze. Untying a second knot brings a strong wind and untying the last knot results in an even stronger wind. But the most important and impressive invention of Weatheria that we were shown is definitely the weather ball. The weather ball is a snow globe like structure that has various forms of weather inside of it and it is literally grown in a garden. So purely through science, these guys are literally growing weather as if it is a fruit. And Nami was able to weaponize this knowledge, perfecting her climb attack. And now she's able to form a lightning cloud indoors and change atmospheric conditions to form mirages or even make herself invisible. So clearly, at the highest levels, the One Piece world isn't lacking as it relates to weather technology. So now let us speak about some technologies unique to the One Piece world. We have already briefly alluded to DALs when we spoke about Skypean transportation technology. But DALs are used for much more than just transportation. Dals are devices made from the remains of a particular species of shellfish which have the ability to store energy and matter. They are mainly found in Skypea, however they are used even on the lower seas. We know this because Brook bought a tone dial from a merchant ship on the lower seas. Now there are many types of dials that are able to store and release various things. One of the most common is the breath dial which can store and release wind. 
And as we said before, the breath dial is what is used to produce the waiver and most other Skypean transportation technology. There is also the jet dial, which is just a more powerful version of the breath dial. Nami's waiver has a jet dial, thus making it faster than a normal one. And the Inel's flying ship, the Art Maxim, has a backup propulsion system powered by jet dials. There is also the heat dial, which stores and releases heat energy, and it is mainly used by Skypean residents for cooking and in heating devices, but it can also be used in Sky Warfare as seen with Shura's heat javelin, which is equipped with a heat dial, making it a fire lance. Note however, that there is a flame dial, which is different from the heat dial, in that it doesn't store heat energy, but rather it stores and releases actual fire itself. We see this for example with Shura's giant bird Fusa, which has one in its mouth that enables it to breathe fire. Then you have the lamp dial, which is capable of storing and steadily releasing light, thus it is used as a lamp. This is in comparison to the flash dial, which can also store and release light, but it releases the light in one big burst. We've seen the flash dial being equipped to a gun to hide the bullets when it is fired, and we've also seen it being used basically as a flash grenade in the Usopp vs Luffy fight. And we already mentioned the tone dial, which records and replays sounds spoken into it. But there is also the vision dial, used for capturing images and playing them back, which is comparable to a modern day video camera. Basically anything you can think about, there is probably a dial for it. Even things that you would not be thinking about, there is a dial for it. Like for example, there is a milky dial that can store and release clouds. And I mean we've seen Gadatsu install milky dials in the soles of his shoes allowing him to fly. You can even store and release a literal kinetic energy with the impact dial. So we see here where through dials, Skypiea has modern amenities, but it still fits into the setting that Oda is trying to work with. When we spoke about submarines, we had also briefly mentioned coating. So as you can probably guess, coating is basically just the process of putting a ship in a special bubble which allows it to be operated underwater like a submarine. Now this bubble is derived from a special resin secreted from the roots of the Yarukiman mangroves at Sabadi Archipelago. And this resin has a special property of trapping air thus the people on the ship have oxygen to breathe. It is also highly resistant to pressure because a properly coated ship can go 10,000 meters below sea level to the seafloor without any problems. For reference, most modern submarines would be crushed by water pressure if they went more than 3,000 meters below sea level. But through coating, almost any ship can operate underwater and go to the seafloor. There is also flutter coating, which is a variant of normal coating, in which instead of coating a ship, you coat a person with one of these bubbles and it operates like a scuba suit with an attached oxygen tank. And again, the depth below sea level to which they are submerged does not seem to matter. And if you are wondering, yes, there are actual scuba suits available in the One Piece world. In the One Piece world, there is also a thing known as Viver Cards, also known as the Paper of Life. Now a Viver Card is a special form of paper made in the new world from a clipping of a person's fingernail. At first glance, it is indistinguishable from an ordinary paper. However, it is completely waterproof and fireproof. But it can be torn, and the torn pieces will point to and move towards each other no matter where they are in the world, thus allowing a person to always be able to tell which direction the other person is in. And if the life force of the owner is weakening, the card will begin to burn away and will completely disappear if the person dies. But the paper will grow back to normal if the person recovers before dying. Now the last thing I want to talk about is interplanetary travel. Now we know very little about the One Piece universe. We don't even know the name of the planet that One Piece occurs on, much less anything about its solar system. However, we do know that interplanetary travel is both possible and has already happened in the One Piece world. So for context, you'll remember that Inel's main goal was to travel to a place he called Fairy Earth. This was supposedly a place with a limitless amount of earth and it is in the sky but it is not a cloud or a bird. It is a place that supposedly defies all laws of nature. Well, via the cover stories, which we know are canon, this magical place turned out to be the moon. So after being defeated by Luffy, Inel fixed his flying ship, the Art Maxim, and went to the moon. 
And we know that he wasn't even the only one to go there from his planet because some automata which were created by Professor Sukumi on Karakuri Island also went to the moon via what seems to be balloons to avenge Professor Sukumi, their creator, who choked to death after seeing Enel destroy a large portion of the moon. I'll repeat, this is all canon. And going to the moon with balloons may seem a little strange to you, but remember, the Sky Island that Kaido jumped off of was called Balloon Terminal and was being held up by thousands of balloons 10,000 meters in the air. So these aren't exactly ordinary balloons. And we know that the moon had indigenous inhabitants who created automata and then left them behind after resources ran out and headed off to somewhere identified as the blue planet or the blue star. There are even space pirates apparently. So interplanetary travel is a solid component of One Piece that I really hope Oda will explore more in the main story. Now many of you will know that I did not mention things like the eternal pose, Vegapunk using science to make a sword eat a devil fruit, the creation of artificial islands like Jerma Kingdom and Karakuri Island which are on the sea and Weatheria which is in the sky, the ancient weapons capable of mass destruction as well as a host of other things. But this is just because there's too much to go over here. The world of One Piece is very vast and complex so I can't possibly cover everything in this single video. But at this point I'm hoping it is now clear that the world of One Piece is a different world than our own. So obviously we can't expect them to have the exact same technology that we do. But generally, they have their own setting appropriate equivalents of our modern technology and in some fields they have even surpassed us. But anyway, that's basically it. And as always, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section down below and see you guys next time.